most people pick the wrong IT career. They see some TikTok or an article saying that cybersecurity is printing money and then they head towards the wrong path. No plan and no real understanding of the day-to-day -day reality of the job. And then a year later, they're either burned out, underpaid, or stuck in a job that they absolutely hate. Here's the truth. IT jobs are not created equal. Some are fun but lead nowhere. Some pay insanely well but will drain you mentally. And a few a few are legitimately life-changing if you choose them early and commit. I've been a system administrator at an MSP for just over a year, dealing with real infrastructure and real problems. Broken VPN tunnels, asymmetric routing, AD disasters, Azure issues, outages, banking audits, security incidents, and I've watched people climb into and wash out of almost every major sector of IT. So today I'm ranking the major IT careers for 2026 for what really matters, salary, barrier to entry, long-term demand, fun factor, remote flexibility, and burnout. This is the real tier list and not the hype. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna kick it off with C tier. These are the jobs that help you break into IT. You'll get some experience and you'll learn how real environments work, but these don't really offer long-term ROI unless you pivot your way out. So help desk is gonna be the normal place where people start. I'm gonna rank it an overall five out of 10. Honestly, this is where I started too. You'll learn communication skills, triage, and how to stay calm when someone claims that email is down when really they just clicked on the wrong icon. But let's be real, help desk is a launch pad and not a career. When I was a T1, 90% of my days were password resets, outlook profile rebuilds, onboarding, printers, basic troubleshooting, all necessary skills, but things that you learn fast and they don't really compound over time. You hit that ceiling quickly and burnout usually comes from repetition, not necessarily pressure. Here's the breakdown. Next up, we have data center technician with an overall ROI of six out of 10. Data center technician sounds like infrastructure work and it really is, but it doesn't scale well over time. You'll rack servers, swap drives, run cable, troubleshoot hardware, and learn that physical side of IT, which is valuable, but this isn't really transferable to cloud or security without reskilling. In my own sysadmin work, I manage ESXi hosts, SANs, snapshots, VLANs, all remotely, and that's where the industry is heading. Fewer hands on site, more things can be done remotely, and there's more automation behind the scenes. So this is good experience, it's just not a really high upside path. Here's the breakdown on data center technician. Next up in the C tier, we have a NOC technician, which I'm gonna give an overall ROI of four out of 10. NOC roles are repetitive. Monitoring dashboards, monitoring alerts, escalating issues, documenting events. You're not really engineering, you're just waiting for things to break. Now this is great for beginners and to get your foot into the door, but again, you're gonna wanna pivot out towards something like sysadmin or network engineer. Here's the overall breakdown for knock technician. Okay, so now we're gonna move into B tier. These are solid, respectable careers with actual upsides. They pay well, they're in demand, and they build genuinely valuable skills. But each one of these comes with a trade-off that you need to understand before locking in. So the first B tier career is System Administrator, uh, I'm gonna give this generalist IT ROI eight out of 10. Sysadmin is the role that built my entire career. You touch everything, Active Directory, Entra, Azure Identity Issues, Group Policy, DNS, DHCP, VMware, Backups, VPNs, Firewalls, Vulnerability Management, all of the infrastructure that really matters in IT. And at an MSP, the learning curve is insane. I've fixed asymmetric routing on ASAs, restored ATM or camera connectivity by changing VLANs. I've troubleshot firewall ACLs that were breaking entire configurations for a bank and walked auditors through remediations. You learn in this job because you're forced to. Now the trade-off for all of this is burnout. Sysadmin is constant context switching, constant escalations, and constantly getting pinged with, hey, can you take a look at this really quick? You live kind of in a reactive mode, but as a career foundation, nothing beats it. Sysadmin makes every future path easier. Networking, cloud, cyber, DevOps. Here's the quick breakdown of what you're looking at with sysadmin in 2026. Okay, the next B tier career is going to be software developer. I'm going to give the overall ROI of this position a 7 out of 10. Dev is still a great field, it's just more competitive than ever. AI absorbed a ton of junior work, interviews are absolutely brutal, and you need real projects and skills to stand out. But once you're in, the upside is amazing. Fully remote, high salaries, and the ability to job hop for better raises. Here's the quick breakdown on software engineers in 2026. And last in the B tier, we have data and analytics. I'm gonna give this career a total ROI of seven and a half out of 10. Data roles, analysts, BI engineers, data engineers are extremely high impact. You're using SQL, Python, dashboards, automation, and business logic to drive decisions. Companies rely heavily on people who can translate raw data into insights. So the skill stack to get in is real, but the upside is huge. Here's the breakdown on this career. 
Okay, so now we're moving into A tier, the careers that have real long-term value. These fields pay well, they stay in demand, and they give you options no matter where the industry goes. The first A tier career I'm gonna put as networking. I'm gonna give it an overall ROI of nine out of 10. Networking is the backbone of everything. Cloud, security, VPN tunnels, remote access, ATM networks, cameras, VOIP, you name it. And the crazy part is that most beginners overlook it. You can pass the CCNA and actually lab routing, switching, VLANs, ACLs, get some BGP fundamentals, and you instantly separate yourself from like 90% of IT engineers. In my own sysadmin role, aside from the networking things that I've already discussed, I've done things like hunting down devices using CDP and trunk commands and looking at MAC address tables and switches. This on top of an understanding of how devices get IPs, how devices use DNS, how public DNS works, and generally how traffic flows across a network has been super useful. Now this experience translates into higher paying network roles. And you have to understand, unlike cloud or dev, networking fundamentals barely change. Change. And this is a feature, not a bug. Here's the breakdown for network engineers in 2026. Next on the A tier is gonna be anything government or clearance work. I'm gonna give this an overall ROI of eight and a half out of 10. This is by far the most underrated cheat code in IT. If you can land a top secret security clearance, an entire new job market opens up for you. Competition drops, salaries rise, and job security becomes almost absurd. Cleared roles prioritize trustworthiness almost as much as technical skill. Now I haven't had clearance personally, but working in a banking environment where everything is really highly regulated and we're constantly dealing with audits, I think I've gotten as close as one possibly could to the civilian version of that clearance rigor. People coming from these environments transition really well. Now the downsides to government is that hiring is slow and remote flexibility is low, but the stability and pay are unmatched. Here's the breakdown for government and TS work in 2026. Lastly, we have the S tier careers, the careers where everything lines up pay, demand, long-term stability, and only real upside. If I were starting from zero today, these are the lanes that I would go all in on. Now the first S tier is cloud administration and DevOps. I'm gonna give this nine and a half out of 10. Cloud and automation are the future. Every company that takes IT seriously is either already in Azure or AWS or planning a migration to Azure or AWS. And the more cloud work I've done, identity problems, VNets, NSGs, routing rules, hybrid DNS, automation scripts, CICD, the more I've realized that this whole industry is just infrastructure plus logic plus scale. Everything I learned as a sysadmin translated perfectly towards this role. Cloud is also the first field where even mid-level engineers are gonna clear six figures easily. And unlike traditional sysadmin work, you're not really babysitting servers. You're building architecture, automating processes deploying solutions and scaling infra for entire organizations. It moves fast, it's high stakes, but that's also what makes it fun. Here's the breakdown of cloud engineering and DevOps in 2026. And then lastly, the one everyone's waiting for, cybersecurity. I'm gonna give it an overall ROI of nine and a half out of 10. Now you have to understand, cybersecurity is not this zero to 150K in six months nonsense that you're gonna see online. This is a field that requires depth, specialization, and real experience. Especially if you niche down into IAM, cloud security, detection engineering, DFIR, or GRC. I've been involved in real security incidents. I've handled identity issues worked through vulnerability scans, responded to audit findings, and have contributed evidence for banking regulators. Once you understand how to actually secure identity, cloud environments, and on-prem infrastructure, you become absolutely future-proof. Cyber pays insane because the demand is there, and the specialization is there, and the work actually matters. But yes, the stress can get heavy when an incident hits. Here's the breakdown for cyber in 2026. So here's how I look at it. If you're just getting started, use help desk or sysadmin as your launch pad. Those jobs teach you the fundamentals you're gonna use for the rest of your career. But don't stay there forever and pick a lane with real long-term upside. If you like infrastructure and problem solving, go networking. If you like building and scaling systems, go cloud or DevOps. If you're wired for defense and investigation, go cybersecurity. Any one of those paths can take you to six figures if you really commit to certs, labs, and home projects. And you gotta stay consistent. Consistent. Listen, I wish you guys the absolute best in your search for an IT career. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to respond to them. Thanks so much for all the support lately. You guys be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and good luck choosing the IT career path for you. Bye.